Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time coming, but here we are. My final 2020 video, unless I ever want to make another 2020 video. I was gonna make K-pop videos for 2020, but that may or may not end up happening if I ever decide to make year in K-pop lists. Not doing that right now. Anyway, without further ado, this is my final 2020 video. I am so ready to move on from this year, however, I did want to make one final video where I talked about what I was listening to in my top 100 songs of 2020. Now, before I get into this, a few things I want to say. One is that this is my opinion. These are just the songs that I liked the most out of the songs that I heard. Now, of course, if somebody else listened to different music and if there's a really awesome song, uh, I probably just, chances are I haven't heard it or it wasn't my style. Um, the next thing is that the, the placements are pretty arbitrary, uh, that stuff, uh, uh, that there, there are rough approximates as to where they actually belong list. At the end of the day, these placements could move around depending on what mood I'm in or which particular song I want to listen to at that time. And also, this is subject to change. My opinions change all the time. And I want to keep in mind that this isn't just the songs that I like the most from 2020. I could listen to a song right now that came out in 2020, and I'm not going to put that on the list. These are the songs that I listened to in 2020 that were my favorites. So without further ado, let's go. And also, I'm pretty sure most of these songs came out in 2020. There might be a couple that were late 2019 singles. I'm pretty sure like Blinding Lights was, I don't remember. But they were 2020 songs for all intents and purposes. So yeah, there isn't too much else to say. So without further ado, um, let's, Let's go. Number 100, Labyrinth by G Friend. So here we are with G Friend, and they did have a few comebacks in 2020, but this is a B side from their first EP of the year, their Labyrinth EP, and I love this. It sounds fantastic. It's high, upbeat, energetic. The scents sound like a video game soundtrack, and I absolutely love that about the song. However, we're keeping this at number 100, and I'm not going to talk about G Friend because I don't want to. If you don't know what's been going on, then let's just leave it at that. 99, Easy by Stray Kids. So yeah, in my journey of listening to K-pop last year, I honestly don't like Stray Kids music that much. I know that's something I've been kind of having a hard time admitting to myself as the members seem like cool people and I have a couple friends who are really big fans of them, but yeah. Just like a lot of other boy groups, Stray Kids music really isn't for me. This is the best song that they released last year. That was a single, at least. I didn't hear the others. Easy is a nice song. It's got a cool oriental flair. The rapping is fantastic as always, and the beat is good. The song has a nice flow to it. That's all I can say. 98, Orbit by Hwasa. So this song was from an OST to something I didn't watch, but whatever. Plus, as a great singer, she's from Mamamoo, she has a unique voice, and this song is just a very nice, soothing trap pop song. There's really nothing else to say to that, it just sounds nice. 97, Puma by TXT. This song is just like pure energy and fire, it has a really epic sound to it. I don't know how else to explain it. I was just kind of blown away when I watched this. This was definitely not a concept I expected to see from TXT. It's kind of dark for them, but I like the song, so hey. 96, Gotta Go by Sunmi. This time we have another OST, it's Sunmi, and this is a very untraditional song for her. This is kind of a more heavy drum and bass EDM trap kind of thing. It's really not in her normal synth pop vein, but I liked it a lot. It's got a lot of energy, it feels really frantic, and it's just a really nice change of pace for Sunmi. 95, Yes Sir by 3 Ye, 3 Yay. Is it just I? I seriously have no idea how to pronounce the name of this group. But anyway, 3 Ye is a group of three members, and they their comeback song this year, Yes Sir, was my favorite. They did also release Queen, which I liked a lot, but Yes Sir has a really great bombastic militaristic vibe, and the song sounds fantastic. I like heavy hitting EDM like this, so Yes Sir was right up my alley. 94. Why by Hwasa, another Hwasa track here, this time for EP Maria, with a really nice um, synth pop sound to it. It's kind of an angsty love song here, It's and again, I just really am in here for the bassy synths, that's kind of why I like this. I mean, I guess why I like this. 
93, Safety Net by Ariana Grande and Ty Dolla Sign. This is a song from Ariana Grande's album, Positioned. It's a really low-key kind of R&B track. I really like how it's a song about entering a relationship where she doesn't really feel secure in this, and she could go too far with this. Ty Dolla Sign and Ariana have really good chemistry, the production is nice, and overall this is just a really nice track. 92, Breakup Song by Little Mix. This was the lead single off Confetti, and it's a really worthy single. It's super bouncy and upbeat and a great song for dance crying, as Dua Lipa would say. That's all I really have to say about it. Little Mix sound awesome as always, and this song is a great vibe. 91, Drama by TXT. Another TXT song here off the same EP, and I just love this. This is a super upbeat, fun vibe. It's got some great piano, and it's just a very catchy song to put on. 90, Hypnotized by Aviva. So here we are with my darker side of my music taste, which is coming out more and more recently as I'm listening to a lot of old pop, and Aviva is one of the artists I've listened to. This was my favorite song first that was released in 2020. That's all I really have to say about it. But seriously, check out Aviva, she's awesome. 89, Mmm by Kai. So here we are with Kai from EXO with his solo debut, Mmm, and it's a really good track. I also really liked Ride or Die from the EP. Those two songs are really good. But Mmm basically sounds a lot like a Taman song, and we'll be getting a lot more Taman on this list as we go forward. So yeah, it's a great track. 88, Let Me Move You by Sabrina Carpenter for Work It. And this is just a really fun bass track. I don't know what else to say. It's got a great synth and disco groove to it. There really isn't much to say about it besides that. It's just a good song to put on and chill to. 87, Bad Karma by Gabby Hanna. Here we go with another kind of dark song. It's got a fun, playful vibe to it though. It's about a toxic ex and I really like the weird off-kilter plinking piano keys, the weird production choices throughout with the vocals, and the overall just witty writing throughout. Definitely shows Gabby's versatility and it's a definite and it's a good track. The bass is great too. 86, You Should Be Sad by Halsey. And on the topic of alt pop and toxic exes, this is a very nice song that takes a dive into country. It's a pretty ugly picture she paints of this ex, and it has a really great vibe to it. I always really liked this one, and I put it on my best hit songs of 2020 list. A lot of people don't like this song for some reason, which I can understand, but it's kind of the point of it being bitter. It's supposed to be bitter. I figured I would explain that in case anyone didn't understand. 85, Nasty by Ariana Grande. Here we go with just a really hot, sultry R&B track from Ariana here. It's got some absolutely angelic vocals, um, and it just sounds absolutely fantastic overall. It's a really low-key song, but it really suits Ariana very well. 84, Paradise by Siyun. This song is by Siyun of Dreamcatcher. This is her solo track and a bonus track on Dreamcatcher's album, and this is just a really pleasant song. I don't really know how to describe it, but it just sounds really nice overall. And as far as ballads go, I do like this. 83, Can't You See Me by TXT. Here we go with another TXT track. This one being kind of playing into the same dark vibe, although not quite as forceful as something like Puma. This one's a little more angsty or dare I say emo. I really liked the music video for this as well with the house being on fire and them throwing strawberries everywhere. It's weird, but I liked it, so what else am I supposed to say? TXT really proved themselves this year, and I think they have a ton of potential, so definitely check them out. 82, Don't Call Me Again by TWICE. I'm not always super into TWICE's music in the past, but this was the year I kind of came around on them, and they released some damn good tracks this year. Several that are missing the list besides from the More and More EP, and I did like More and More itself. This is the one that made the list, though. Don't Call Me Again. It's got a super catchy hook with some great vocal melodies and, of course, the horns. The song just sounds really great overall, and it's just a very catchy and upbeat track. It's not my favorite choice song of the year, though, but we'll get to that. 81, Zot Ani by Ella Lee. Now, I became aware of this song because somebody said that the melody or the tempo or something, it was ripping off Hit by Mamamoo. Uh, that's how I became aware of the song's existence, but boy am I glad I did because it's a really catchy song. 
17-year-old Israeli star LL Lee broke out with this particular track, and I really like it. I did like her follow-up track as well, but this is still easily my favorite. It's a pure burst of energy, and she's so talented in many fields, including singing and rapping, and even dancing from the video. She's honestly great, and I can't wait to hear more from her. 80, Pretty Savage by Blackpink. Here we are with my favorite song of Savage in the title from this year. Why was that such a trend? Anyway, we've got Blackpink with Pretty Savage, and I do like this a lot, but it feels like kind of a by-the-numbers Blackpink song. I do think their other output this year was better, with the exception of Ice Cream and uh, Bet You Wanna. <laughs> but here we are. This song's fun. I like it. It's bouncy. It's a pretty basic EDM trap song, but it's got Blackpink swagger, and I can appreciate it for that. 79, Eclipse by Moonbule. Another Mama Moon member here. Moonbule's track, Eclipse, was easily one of my favorites of the year to just listen to. It's a very dark sounding song. It's got a lot of drum and bass, not a whole lot else going on, and a lot of really, you know, interesting production choices here. Got some snares, and the song sounds pretty intense. It's got a, it's got a good drop, and it feels like it builds properly. It really suits this badass dark image that Moonbill is putting forward here. It wasn't my favorite song she made this year, but I did like it a lot. 78, Wasted on You by Evanescence. Man, this Evanescence song sure does exist, doesn't it? I'm sorry for the shitty joke aside, but Evanescence is back and I'm happy, so yeah. 77, Sweet Melody by Little Mix. Now, I did like Breakup Song, but this is really more down my lane. I really like the R&B flavor of a song. It's got a great upbeat vibe to it. The girls sound awesome as always. The harmonization is spot on and the song overall is just really catchy and memorable. 76. Say My Name by Hyolin. Hyolin is a former member of the group Sistar and this is her solo track Say My Name that came out this year. It's got a really nice laid back R&B, slightly reggae, reggae flavored sound to it. And it's just a super chill, laid-back song. If you like putting on music in the background when you just want to chill, this is a great option. 75, Not Shy by Itzy! <laughs> okay, but here we are, seriously. Itzy is one of my favorite K-pop groups that have come out recently. They've got so much funk and attitude, and I absolutely love that about them. Every track of theirs is absolutely bursting with personality, which can be a detriment in some cases, but thankfully they come through with Not Shy, being a really powerful single that just kicks ass. It did feel like a bit of a switch up in their sound, which I was happy to hear. And overall, it was definitely a nice change of pace. 74, Absence by Moonbyul. Now, this one's a breakup song, and it's kind of sad. This hit me really hard when I was missing somebody about 2 a.m., not in a breakup sense, but it still hit. And yeah. It's just a really pretty ballad. Moonbyul has a surprisingly nice singing voice for mainly being a rapper. And the production is pretty sweet as well. That's all I really have to say for this one. 73, Hardest to Love by The Weeknd. This is just a really nice, chill song. I thought all of After Hours was just a really chill album to put on. And this was my favorite song uh, besides the obvious one. So yeah, this is a nice song. I like it a lot. 72, Tonight by Black Swan. I thought this was a really promising debut from this group, and um, yeah, it just absolutely slaps. It really reminds me of the sexy concept era from 2013 to 2014 when it comes to K-pop. And in general, I really like that this song has more of a rock vibe with those guitar rollicks in there, and the song is just hot as hell. There isn't really much else I can say about it. It's just awesome. 71, Spit It Out by Solar. We have a third Mamamoo member joining the roster here, this time Solar's debut solo track, Spit It Out. And what can I say? This is just a really nice track. It's got some really nice Latin flavored guitars. Solar sounds great as always. The bridge is absolute fire. And the song overall is just something that's chill to dance to and has a nice vibe to it. 70, 3 a.m. by Halsey. Here we are with Halsey in 3 a.m. And for all those you people who don't like You Should Be Sad, well, it's okay, you should like this one. Anyway, yeah, this about sums up 2020 just <laughs> so easily. And the song is a bop as well, so props there. 69, Love To Hate Me by Blackpink. Now, I really liked this B-side track. It was one of my favorites, but my biggest problem is that little part before the chorus. That part's really jarring. It just kind of 
feels inserted in there. If they took that part out, this would easily be one of my favorite songs of the year. However, I still really liked the track. It's got a great vibe, it kind of sounds like Kim Petras or somebody like that. I don't know, it's just a really great song, go check it out. 68, Villain by Jessie Page. Now here we are with Jessie Page and her song, Villain. I really like how the song plays with the themes of, you know, self-doubt and not really knowing yourself. And I absolutely love the sound of the song. It's got this kind of blown out guitar sound to it. It sounds really great and it fits the tone very well. I do tend to like dark songs like this, and this is the type of alt pop that is right up my alley, so definitely check it out. 67, Think of You by Taman. Here we are with our first Taman song on the list, and yeah, this song is just incredibly cute and fun to listen to, especially if you watch the video. It is a song that he pretty much wrote for his fans. It's a very nice tone to it. It's very nice, but it's not my favorite. 66, Positions by Ariana Grande. Here we are with Ariana Grande. I really like how the strings come into the song. It's pretty hot. I like the little plucky guitars. And the song is just downbeat and chill, but also feels pretty nice to listen to. I like it a lot. 65, BMC by Baby Metal. Here we are with my first Baby Metal track that I actually fell in love with at first sight. Okay, I'm actually slowly getting into their back catalog a bit more. I really didn't like them that much. I was only forced to like them because of the YouTube algorithm. However, BMT absolutely rocks. It's an absolute bop here, and it just feels like the kind of thing to sing to. I also just realized I said BMT instead of BMC. BMT is a sub we make. I work at Subway, so, um, yeah, brain slip. But BMC is a great fucking track. Check it out. 64, Cardigan by Taylor Swift. This is just a really nice story song about a relationship. It's a super laid back but elegant ballad. I really love the piano. It's a simple melody, but extremely elegant. Taylor Swift's multi-track vocals sound fantastic. And this is one of my favorite singles from her in a long time, but I have always really had a soft spot for Taylor Swift's ballads. So here we are. 63, Skeleton by Jesse Page. Here we are with my other favorite Jesse Page song. And this one, was released and her talking about freeing herself from her eating disorder and it's a really great take it has some cl really clever metaphors but the song itself is actually sounds really great as well of course jesse sounds great the production is great and if it's a really good narrative i like it 62 happiness by little mix now this is the real shit this is an absolute bop and i love everything about this song it's got a great triumphant tone to it. This is what I go to my little mix for. Great stuff. 61, How You Like That by Blackpink. Here we go with Blackpink's lead off single for their album, and what am I supposed to say? The song slaps. It's got a great snappy bass. The girls sound fantastic on it as always. The production is tight as always, and the ending of the song sounds great as well. It is a great outro. The dance is fun and catchy. The beat is springy and upbeat. The song is a great diss to haters without feeling overbearing like Kill the Slav. It's great stuff. 60. Shut Me Up by Gabby Hanna. Here we go with Gabby Hanna's first attempt at a more rock track, and I like it. She really nailed this here. She had those kind of 50s chords, I guess is the way I would describe it, and um, she did get a real band on this. The song's about being silenced by a toxic person, and it's a pretty good narrative as well. The song's got a great sound to it. Not my favorite Gabby Hanna track ever, but still a very good song, and I can't wait to hear more in this lane. 59, Kings and Queens by Ava Max. Okay, slightly patronizing lyrics aside, oh my god, the multi-tracking on the chorus sounds glorious, even though it is jacking a melody from Bon Jovi, and I'm sorry, but how many songs have awesome sense solos like this? I'm sorry, I don't usually hear shit like this in my songs. We stand. And speaking of female empowerment, here we are with number 58, Gloves Up by Little Mix. Gosh, I love this. This is really great. It's really a shame that this will be their last album with Jazzy. I mean, I liked her, but hey, I wish her the best. Seriously, this song slaps though. One of my favorites on the album, definitely. But not my favorite. We'll get to that shortly. 57, You Never Know by Blackpink. This one was definitely a slow burn off Blackpink's album, but I really love it. It's a great ballad. 
which goes looking into the lives of, well, anyone, but especially celebrities, and how we don't really know what's going on with them, and how people just blindly judge, and it's got a really nice sound to it as well. Simple yet elegant piano melody, and this girl sounds fantastic as always. 56. Be in love by Itzy. So here we are with Itzy again. I really do like their upbeat tracks, but I was really waiting for them to make a ballad, and this is the closest thing they've come to it for sure. I do like the guitar and the kind of ensemble vocals. It does remind me of a 2000s pop song in a good way. It's super cute and infectious. And a really sweet little song from Itzy. Not something I would typically expect, but it ended up being my favorite off the album, so hey. 55, Blinding Lights by the Weeknd. I mean, what am I supposed to say? It's, it's Blinding Lights by the Weeknd. I mean, seriously. Anybody who doesn't have this song on their list is mad. 54, Stay Tonight by Chunga. Here I am with just an awesome synth pop song, which has some really great different elements to it. It keeps you on your toes guessing and lots of different surprises. Play very nearly made the list, but that one's a lot more situational to summer. Stay Tonight is something you can put on pretty much every time, and damn, it's good. I really think a lot of people slept on this. Saying, oh, it's disappointing. It's not Chunga's best song. It's not as good as snapping. You know, fuck off. Stay Tonight is awesome, and I don't want to hear anything to the contrary. 53, Nu Nu Na Na by Signature. Oh yes, my weird little affinity for this group and this song, but seriously, this song is just pure happiness. It's just so much fun, and typically I don't like shit like this. Oh god, Promise 9. Oh god, Rocket Punch. But for some reason, Signature really lands with me. I'm not sure why, but it just does. So, definitely listen to them. Or don't, because they're kind of elf. 52, Plastic Hearts by Miley Cyrus. Here we are, the first time I ever listened to a Miley Cyrus album in, whole, in total, and wow, it was good. Yeah, there were some slower tracks in there, and some things that lean more toward country than I really liked, and, but this song does have a bit of a country vibe to it. But it sounds really fantastic. Miley's vocals are fantastic, and it has a great vibe to it. Definitely keep up, Miley. 51, Dum Drum by A-Pink. I think it's a group I've never been all that into, but man, this song hit really great. Another song that nearly made the list in the similar vein was La 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 by April, but Dum Drum just had the slight edge in terms of the sheer amount of elegance they were able to pull off of this. It's super elegant and magical, but also fun and danceable. It's a great track, and definitely underrated. 50. Rendezvous by Little Mix. This is my favorite song on Confetti, and it's just a really great slow burn R&B song with some really great vocals and it really gets reaches a great part in the chorus. 50. But yeah, this is my favorite song of Confetti and uh, it's just fucking great. What am I supposed to say? 49. Dandelion by Gabby Hanna. This might be one of Gabby Hanna's hardest hitting songs on the motion level, besides Medicaid, of course, which is just an absolutely devastating track, but this is kind of like the better version of Out Loud. This is kind of what Out Loud should have been, and God, this song hits. It's got some really great vocals, and the background chanting is great too. This one definitely hits harder, but it's not my favorite thing she released this year, but still great. 48, Answer by ATs. ATs is one of the boy groups I found myself consistently actually liking their songs, which is kind of weird because their stuff is over the top and it is very busy and cluttered. However, they have a really great anthemic swell in their melodies and I'm gonna explain it. It just sounds fucking great. And I don't know why the pirate theme works so well, but it just does. And literally all their songs slap, so... This was one of my favorite songs of the year for the longest time. It did fall off a bit, but still great stuff. 47, Black Swan by BTS. This entire song fits really, really well. I love the dark vibe of it. The song is about them being afraid of losing their passion for music. And it sounds fantastic. I love the slow burn guitars. The vocals are cool. The autotune is used in an incredibly artistic way, unlike him on. And the chorus is absolutely something you can sing along to. It will get stuck in your head, especially the do your thing part. And God, the pre-chorus and the Harmonies sound fantastic as well. Easily my favorite thing BTS has put out since 2018. 46, Endless Night by uh, Dreamcatcher. And I'm just sitting here thinking, why the fuck don't I listen to more J-pop? Like, seriously, I really need to get on that. Now, technically, Dreamcatcher are a Korean group. This is a Japanese single, what? Okay, I don't know. This song sounds awesome. 
it's absolutely high energy and great. I'm loving this guitar style. And man, I really just need to listen to more J-pop and J-rock, I guess, specifically. 45, Idea by Taman. This was the title track for part two of Taman's album, and man, it's unique. I love the dramatic strings, and Taman sounds absolutely fantastic on the track, as always. I love everything he puts out. He's just an absolute legend. The dance is amazing. The visuals are amazing. Everything about this song is just fucking perfect. 44, Call Me Crazy by Gabby Hanna. This is my favorite song that came out this year from Gabby Hanna. And it's from the perspective of Gabby being a psychotic girlfriend, and I love it. She has a lot of versatility that she's able to play into this character so well, and the song sounds fantastic too. It's got a super catchy guitar and bass melody, and yeah, I'm probably gonna get this stuck in my head a shit ton of times. The verses sound like Faster My Car by Paramore, and Gabby should really just start making rock already. 43, Inception by 80s. Oh my god, these guys know how to make hooks. They're so anthemic, and I love them, absolutely. This is my favorite thing we put out this year. I did like Thanks as well, but I'm pretty sure ATs can't make bad songs. Except Wave. That one's okay. 42, Heaven by Taman. If you like over-the-top sexy R&B, listen to this. No, seriously, this is like... This is like some hard shit, I mean... This shit doesn't play around. Also, if you liked Holy Water, because I'm pretty sure this is just the sequel to Holy Water. Let's move on before I start sweating. 40, POV by Ariana Grande. 41, actually. This song is absolutely gorgeous. Everything about it just feels so fantastic. The strings are absolutely gorgeous. Ariana's multi-layered vocals and the background vocals here, fucking fantastic. I really like the theme of the song as well, and oh, come on, this is just great stuff. I'm only at number 41, and I just talked about POV by Ariana Grande. Damn. 40, Waiting For by Taman. Here we go with one of my favorite tracks off Act 1, and yeah, this absolutely slaps. I absolutely love the sexy vibe with the bossa nova vibe going on here, and Taman just sounds fantastic. Even the pitch shift and vocals sound good. Seriously, Taman's just awesome. Everything he touches turns to gold dust. 39, Red Sun by Dreamcatcher. This is easily one of my favorite Dreamcatcher side tracks, and I just absolutely love the mystical oriental vibe of the song. It sounds fantastic. Everything about it really lines up really well, but in the end, it's not a rock song, but I do like it a lot. It's great stuff. 38, Hallucinate by Dua Lipa, and here we go with the first of the Dua Lipa tracks, and man, this one's good. Hallucinate has a great vibe to it, and Literally everything about this song absolutely works. It's kind of low-key in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't have a big booming chorus like some of her other songs, but this one still sounds absolutely fantastic and would absolutely kill live. No, seriously, Hallucinate is just amazing. But this is probably more of a good song to have in the background at a club than blaring at the top of your speakers. Still an amazing track though. 37, Break the Wall by Dreamcatcher. Here we go with one of Dreamcatcher's heaviest tracks. This one kind of goes into the metal vein a bit. It really does remind me of Evanescence, at least musically, and the vocals are absolutely fantastic as always. You've got them, those kind of distorted vocals through the verses. The chorus is where they really break the wall and go through with it. The vocals set to sound fantastic. The song's anthemic and the guitar work is great as always. Seriously, someone tell me who plays for Dreamcatcher. Who is their band? They're amazing. 36, Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. Here we go with the title track, Future Nostalgia, and damn, this is fun. Got this great 90s bouncy vibe to it. I love how Dua talks about being futuristic and talks about being the female alpha in this relationship. A lot of the songs really do fit together with relationships. They're simple, but they're just pure pop music bliss and does look forward. Great stuff. 35, WTF Do I Know by Miley Cyrus. Oh my god, this song slaps. Once I, heard, once I heard this track to open the album, I knew I was in for a good time. Miley sounds absolutely fantastic here. It's a song about a breakup that she's gotten over this guy, but damn it hits hard. Miley's vocals really fit this kind of frolicking rock sentiment very well. The song's super up-tempo and has a great vibe to it. It really reminds me of like Joe Judd or something, it's great stuff. 34, Criminal by Taman. Initially, I didn't like this one as much. I kind of thought it was just the same as 
songs like Move or Want, but eventually it really did grow on me. This song is fantastic. Every element is immaculately done, the dance is fantastic, literally all of Taman's moves, everything about the song is just absolutely amazing. I really don't have words for it. Taman is amazing. 33. That's a no-no by Itzy. Now this is what I really like out of Itzy. This is the unfiltered stuff. Or their personality is first and foremost, but it doesn't get obnoxious into something like 24 hours or it's summer. But yeah, the great marching band vibe of this song feels fantastic. I absolutely love how fun and upbeat this song is. It's got a very March to be of your own drum vibe to it, and I love the song for that reason. 32, Be Your Enemy by Taman and Wendy. Absolutely love this song. It's absolutely beautiful. If you look at the lyrical content, it just makes it all the more touching. It's an extremely powerful and potent song with a very gentle sounding melody. And Wendy's vocals fit great on this as well. The song is beautiful. Go check it out. 31, Prisoner by Dua Lipa and Miley Cyrus. Oh my god, this song slaps. I don't really know what else to say. It's a sample of Olivia Newton-John's physical, and Miley and Dua work surprisingly well against this beat. I got Miley for the more rough-edged vocals and the rock vibes to it, and Dua Lipa for the more smoother synth parts. I'm surprised at how well this collaboration actually worked, but after Miley and Dua both making, both making 80s-inspired albums, just wow, this was perfect. Great stuff. 30. Love Sick Girls by Blackpink. Here we go. Absolutely great track from Blackpink, and people who don't like this song, I get it, but I'll be honest here, this is literally just my 2010s pop nostalgia. I mean, what am I even supposed to say? It's just my 2010s pop nostalgia, I'm sorry. That's literally all I can say. Let's just move on before I get cancelled. 29. Black Mamba by Aspa. Okay, I like hard hitting drops, I like bass, I like EDM. What am I supposed to say? I like this song because it's literally everything I like in songs. It goes hard as hell, and I love it for that. 28! Black or White by Dreamcatcher. Another one that took forever to go on me, but... Uh, as it is more of a slow burn type track, but... Man, I love this one. This one is so good. I don't know what else to say. I love the str strings on the chorus, though. His guitar rollicks are really great. Dobby's rap is something else, and... The song as a whole is just has a really great vibe to it. Check it out. 27. Maria by Hwasa. Oh boy, what else am I supposed to say? Maria is just such a great track. I've loved this song ever since it came out. It really blew me away. And everything about the song just fits so well. It's a note to self, self-love kind of song. And the beat, every aspect of the song, it's got a bit of a Latin flair to it. Love every second of it. Great stuff. 26. More by KDA. Man, I really love this hype kind of music. This hype kind of music is some of my favorite. Madison Beer and me in here during vocals, fantastic. We've got Dara Burns on this song as well, Lexi Liu, and of course Soyeon, killing it as always. And the song sounds fantastic. It's not quite my favorite KDA track, but it's damn good. 25. No Time to Die by Billie Eilish. Oh yeah, when's that Bond movie ever coming out? Does anybody care anymore? Okay, no, but seriously, the song is absolutely fantastic. Billie Eilish making Bond themes is just great. No, seriously. Her fucking talent on this song, giving Billie Eilish a more orchestral backing, fantastic. I love the way this song builds and builds, and that sense it really does remind me of Uninvited by Alanis Morissette, one of my favorite songs by Alanis Morissette. This track is just fantastic. I don't have anything else to say. Everything about it is just good. It's one of my favorite Billie Eilish songs, although saying it's my favorite ever would be a hard it would be a stretch. There's definitely so many Billie Eilish songs I love, but this one's just great stuff. 24, Levitating by Dua Lipa. Damn, this is where we get into the great stuff. Seriously, this song is just so euphoric. It's kinda hard for me to decide if I prefer this version or the Baby remix, but this original version was the one that went into my playlist here, so 
yeah. The Baby remix is great as well, though. We don't talk about the Madonna remix. 23, Selfish by Madison Beer. Here we go with a kind of alt pop that I really like. It's very downbeat and minimalistic, and again, it's about a toxic ex, but the production's really great. Madison's vocals are layered nicely, and the song just sounds good. It has a really great narrative to it. It's a long song that's oddly chill for considering the subject matter. I did really like this one. I, I liked Stained Glass too, but that song is a lot. So yeah. 22, Who Dis by Secret Number. Stupid title aside, gosh this one was fun. It's really just bombastic as hell and does all the teen crush elements of K-pop right for this group and their follow-up wasn't nearly as good. What else am I supposed to say? 21. LMM by Hwasa. It's probably my favorite piano ballad here. It's just so beautiful. Hwasa's vocals fit really well with this type of song, and it's got a really great vibe to it. it sounds absolutely fantastic. My favorite song that Hwasa has put out as a soloist easily. 20. Oh My God by Idol. Damn, this song is good. It's kind of hard for them to top it. I do really like Hwa, which they just put out. I keep forgetting that song exists for some reason, but Oh My God was such a great vibe. I'll always love this song. Great stuff, Idol. 19. The Baddest by KDA. I barely like to go back and forth about whether I prefer this one or more, but... This song's fucking amazing. This one features B. Miller and Wolf Tyla, as well as Soyan and Mian, and... This chorus is something else. I love Soyan's rap bit, and the song is just absolutely killer. This is my type of hype music. I don't really know what else to say, I just like it, okay? 18. Poor Up Peepum by Sunmi. This has gotta be Sunmi's best song ever. It's seriously so fantastic. And considering she already had great songs like Heroin and Noir that already existed, the fact she was able to top that so handily with Poor Up Peepum really shows something. Great stuff, Sunmi. Keep it up. Does anyone remember when I talked about Twice all those entries ago? Yeah. I really didn't think Twice was gonna have one of my favorite comebacks of the year, but damn, they pulled it off. This one took a while to grow on me. I did like it when I first heard it, but. I just thought it was an inferior version of another song, and I mean, I still kind of think it is. We'll get to that, but... God, this one's great! It's great in its own right, and I keep playing the song. It's a song that I never get sick of when it comes on. Great stuff. I want Twice to keep going in this direction. Thumbs up from me. 16. Wanna Be by Itzy. This is just a quintessential Itzy song. I really don't have much else to say. If you don't like this song, you're probably not gonna like Itzy as a whole. This is the good version of Dala Dala. I've talked about this in the past. This song is fucking great. I have nothing else to say. It's an absolutely anthemic burst of energy. And it was the song I needed this year. 15, Good and Goodbye by Madison Beer. Man, this was one that I really liked when I first heard it. I liked this from the get-go. And it was a song that didn't really grow old for me. I still put this on frequently. It's a great track. Every element of this works really well, the production's great, and I love the narrative here about a song that just says it straight to the toxic ex's face instead of dancing around it at all. And I really like that. Gets to the point and has a great sound and vibe to it as well. Good stuff. Number 14, Night Crawling by Miley Cyrus and Billy Idol. Oh my god. I was not expecting this and everything about this song is fantastic. There's guitars there, but it's really a sense to get me. Billy Idol was the perfect collaborator for this song because it does sound very 80s and in that dark 80s sense, if you know what I mean. It sounds demented, and I fucking love it. 13. Exile by Taylor Swift and Bone Rare. This was just one of the few songs in 2020 that genuinely made me emotional. And I don't even know why. I don't care about this relationship or breakup in the narrative at all, but just the way the song sounds and the performances, it's genuinely one of the best songs I've ever heard from Swift and great stuff. Her easily her best duet. Shadow Play by Pink Fantasy. My channel intro for now. I don't know, I really want to use something else as a channel intro, but I don't know what yet. Anyway, this song's fantastic. Love it. Still one of my favorite tracks of the year. I've literally gushed about this song forever. There's nothing else to say. Pink Fantasy are awesome. Check them out, please. 11. 
Physical by Dua Lipa. I was so hoping on this being my favorite song and it didn't even make the top 10. Well, it may have shrunk on me ever so slightly. Damn, this is great. I just consider this to be the better version of Lightning Lights. You can hate me if you want. I don't care. 10. Scream by Dreamcatcher. Oh, man. This song is all electronic. There aren't even real guitars on this song. It shouldn't be my favorite, but... Oh, my God. Everything about this track. A song that I still haven't gotten sick of almost a year later. Great stuff. 9. Girls by Nature. I do joke about my music taste being somewhat bipolar in the sense that I either really like really happy and lighthearted upbeat things or dark shit, and this definitely falls into the latter category. Although it has a weird facade over it. It kinda sounds cute, but god this song is horrifying in every way. Just watch the music video for girls. Everything about the song and video are perfection. This is how you do horror right. Great stuff. 8. Black Rose by Taming Kid Millie. Oh my god. Absolutely everything about the song is fantastic. It's a gothic trap song. Need I say more? Also, this song doesn't mess around. It's kind of bitter. And... Yeah. I did talk about this and the album extensively and more of my theories in a separate video, so I'm just leave it at that. Proof that I do like dark stuff and heavier music. Monster by Sulgi and Irene, number seven. I'm sorry. This song is just fantastic. This is easily my favorite thing Red Velvet has ever put out. I probably just said something horrible and blasphemous, but I don't care. Seriously. I like weird off-kilter stuff. I like edgy music. I like weird beat drops and switches. I don't know. This song is just incredibly mechanical in the best fucking way. Weird to call it mechanical because it's monster, but not robot machine, but whatever. I'll take it. Well, this should come as no surprise to absolutely anybody that number six is Break My Heart by Jubilee Bob. What am I supposed to say? Purely euphoric dance crying. Check out my best hit songs of 2020 for a more info on why I like this song. Five, Midnight Sky by Miley Cyrus. Man! I don't even know what to say. This is just genuinely something else. I was never expecting Miley to make a song like this. It's just everything. That's such a great idea, so I can reference to so many things. It's a fucking, it's a fucking sample of Edge of Seventeen by Stevie Nicks, and she actually remixed the song with that song. Just, what else am I supposed to say? This is the best fucking thing ever. Miley, do it. I got excited, I'm sorry. Four, Turn Back Time by Wavy. God, this is one of the songs that resonated with me with this year. Pandemic. Having other bad things happen in my life. Wishing I could turn back time and fix shit. Yeah, this was resonant. No, but seriously. This song just sounds amazing. Yeah. And this song is in Chinese. I don't understand a word they're saying other than the parts that are actually in English, but... Yeah, no. The song's just... Ah! I didn't think anyone was anything was gonna top this as my favorite K-pop song, but we'll get to that. But yeah, everything about this song is fantastic. I love the breakdown towards the end, too. Seriously, everything about this is great. It's like a really great EXO track. Seriously, just wow. Three, Love Again by New Willie Bob. This is my favorite song on Future Nostalgia. It was a close call. There's so many great tracks, but... <sighs> Love Again is just something special. I don't even have a good way to describe it. Literally every single aspect of this song is perfection. When I said earlier in the year that Physical was one of the best pop songs I've heard in a long time, it sure is great, but this is one of the best pop songs I've heard in a long time. Every element of it is absolutely perfect. This song is Euphoria Incarnate, and I love it for that. I like Love Again because of how hard it hits emotionally, but sometimes I just want to get up and dance. Number two, La Di Da by Everglow. Seriously, this song is just... Okay, I'll stop. But seriously, 
is a super up-tempo synth-pop song with a really cool synth solo. What else am I supposed to say? I don't even know what they're saying half the time. From my understanding, is supposed to be some sort of diss to the haters? Awfully cheery beat for that, but hey, I don't give a shit. At least they're tuning out the haters instead of pretending they don't care like Taylor Swift. Seriously, I was not expecting this from Everglow, and I fucking love it. Great stuff. Number one. It was only ever gonna be one song, guys. If you've watched me this year and you've watched my Tame and content, you know what it is. Yes, Two Kids by Tame and is my favorite song of the year, and I could go a little bit into as to why. I've already talked about it in other videos, mainly when I talked about the whole song. I mean, of course I react to it, but I probably talked about it most in my Tamen video. But here we are. Two Kids by Tamen. My favorite song of the year. Why is that? Outside of the fact that it just sounds absolutely fantastic, every element of the song is great. The choreography was freestyled and, oh, the emotions. But is this like the only song that's ever conveyed a very specific niche that I didn't know I needed in music? And it's the niche of feeling regrets over something that you can't change. Uh, specifically feeling regrets over small things that don't matter, that feel absolutely monumental because you can't fix them and you can't apologize for them. That's all I can really say about it. It is a very special niche that I did not know I needed. And this was the song that resonated with me the most in 2020. Cheers. Okay, now that that's over, that was a long ass video. Fuck 2020! <laughs> yeah, okay, seriously. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.